like there's a papule coming into focus. <laughs> yes, case, eight, case 18, a papule is coming into focus. Very good. <laughs> and now what do we think about the papule? Um, so a lot of it just seems like hemorrhage and kind of fibrin. And that, but to the periphery, there are some more vascular appearing spaces. Um, yeah, like to this side, and it looks like the cells are the very small kind of cuboidal um, cytology of like a glomus or a glomangioma. Yeah, very good. That's what it is. It's a glomangioma in this case, I think. Uh, this one is pretty unusual because it's got this huge nodule of fibrin thrombus in the middle and blood. And I like that you pointed out, go to the periphery, because I think um, in settings where you've got a bunch of fibrin and blood, don't forget to go look at the edges, because the edge is where you're going to find the stuff that actually helps you figure out what is going on here. Is this blood and fibrin in a pre-existing vascular space or in some other tumor? Or do we just have blood and fibrin? And I can all I can say is we got fragments of fibrin. I don't know if it's a hematoma or a th intravascular thrombus. I don't know without seeing normal tissue around the periphery, right? And here we've got some tissue, but this is all like, scar and granulation tissue. So probably what happened is it's got biopsied, I would imagine. See, there's scar going to the top or maybe traumatized. I don't know. I don't know the history here, but there's a bunch of scar. It could just be that it bled into itself and thrombosed and all of this is organized thrombus, some of which has turned into scar, some of which is still fibrin. But in any case, uh, we don't know. I don't know what happened here, but looking at the edges, like you said, we see these round monotonous cells. They're kind of forming uh, rows or layers and the multi-layering or the onion skinning around dilated vascular channels is good for glomangioma, aka glomuvenous malformation or glomus tumor if it's a more solid nodule. Like I said earlier, the distinction is, is not really important for clinical purposes usually. Um, uh, in this one looks, they look small, monotonous and benign in appearance. So very good. So I'd call this glomangioma with abundant um, uh, hemorrhage and um, uh, organizing thrombus. Let's go look over here and see if we can get some more look at the unaltered glomangioma. Sometimes the layers can be quite subtle, like it'll really look like a vascular malformation at first, and then you'll just find some areas with very subtle layering of those blue uh, round pericytes or gloma cells around the outside. And um, so that's also fine for a, for a glomangioma or a glomuvenous malformation. Once it comes into focus, we might be able to see. Yeah, there's some right there. And they do tend to like kind of, uh, if you go out to the edge of a glomus tumor or a glomangioma, as vessels track away from it, you will tend to see the glomus cells hanging on and following those vessels or kind of seeing a little bit of it right here. And that can be a useful clue if you're struggling to recognize a glomus, if it's a little unusual. Um, or it's distorted by a bunch of blood or hemorrhage like this. Finding areas at the edge and you can see this little vessel coming away and then along it, the glomus cells are following. They're, they're wrapping the vessel, that's their job. So that's a pretty nice example. Beautiful.